This episode of the Soupcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the Coffee and Q, the Savory, the Carry Steak, and the Mad Hatter. You can't go wrong with any of the seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Do still want to announce that the Mad Canadian is still working on getting his uh, his supplies back in stock. So uh, appreciate everybody being patient. He says here, um, he thanks you and apologizes at the same time. You overwhelmingly support your overwhelming support paired with an alarming unavailable unavailability. Stay tuned to the Mad Canadian social pages for updates on when his shop will be back up. His uh, food truck will be available at the Cary Brewing Station in Cary, Ohio. I, Kyle, I, I think I think not actually. I think that had to be canceled. That one had to be canceled. All right, scratch that then. Yeah. Be sure to check out the Mad Canadian social medias to check out where he might be with his food truck as well as where his um when his uh, stock will be opened up. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company where he has your butt covered. Yeah, uh, just <laughs> wanted to point that out real quick. Um, check check his social media pages just to be sure. I, I think he had to uh, park the truck for a little bit. Uh, let's see. But this episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, cold brewed some unicorn, right? Mm-hmm. Right here. That's that's some cold brewed unicorn right there. That's, a, that's one of the flavored coffees. It's a mystery flavor. I'm not gonna try and guess what it is, but uh, it's really good. I, I like it a lot. I'm not, I've sort of over the years shifted away from the flavored coffees and into more of the standard coffees. This is the last of my unicorn. So I think, I think I'm cracking this big boy open next time. I think, I think so I'm going to get back with a report for you on the ride or die. I'm going to read this package real quick. Tumbled with cocoa nibs and vanilla beans. Hell yeah. That's, that's what the packaging says. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's gonna be the next one. I'll get back. I'm caught in the cables. I'm gonna get back to you guys uh, next week on that one. Uh, it's still Christmas season. Uh, I believe we are now running a sale. The sale code is 2020 to get 20% off. Let me double check my notes on that. Uh, yeah, save 20% off for the rest of the year. Coupon code 2020, and you can find that at ironbeancoffee.com that's America's local coffee roaster Iron Bean Coffee what's up YouTube everyone enjoy the game the game is coming it is yes hopefully (laughs) hopefully Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. But we'll talk about that more once we uh, get our audio listeners back. Yes. Which, Kyle, I'm feeling a little impatient today. Let's go ahead and get our audio listeners back. All right. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you today? I have no complaints. Which is saying something for me, because I like to complain. It's a thing I like to do sometimes. No. (laughs) Yeah, don't say. Oh, that is such a knowing. Nah. Nah. (laughs) So knowing. It's almost like we lived together for a long time or something. Nah. Nah. (laughs) Ohio State defeats Michigan State. 52 to 12. I guess we're right into the bounce back. Let's not yep. screw around today, guys. Nope. We're going to try to hit that hour mark. <laughs> Are we? I mean, we're going to try. We're going to try. We're going to try. 52 to 12. As a lot of us go leading up to this game here was really worried. We kept seeing, oh, it was maybe 10 players. Then we saw it was like 17. <laughs> then it ended up being a total of 23 <laughs> players not being available for the game. We're like, Hold our breath. Let's see, let's see how this uh, this this team's going to respond yeah, with it, the number of players being out. It was the majority seventeen. Of, majority of them, though, on that offensive line. Well, not the, not a majority. Well, 
Majority starters. of the starters were on the yes. offensive line. Yes. yes. Yeah. There were a total of 23 players, 17, which is, I think, where we were getting that 17 number, uh, were scholarship players. Yes. So Ohio State was down 17 scholarship players. Uh, players including Cameron Bob, Tuff Borland, Cam Brown, Mookie Cooper, Jacoby Cohen, uh, Aaron Cox, who's a walk on, Marcus Crowley, Tyler Friday, Patrick Gerd who is a walk-on Jalen Harris, Paris Johnson, uh, not a starter Paris Johnson, but due to other unavailable players would have been a starter. So even though technically not a lost starter, kind of a lost starter, we can get into that a little bit more later. Um, walk-ons Cam Kittle and Jagger LaRue and long snapper. Who's also a walk-on Rowan McCullough. Uh, starting left tackle Thayer Munford, starting center Josh Myers, starting right tackle Nicholas petit Faree, Noah Porter, starting safety Josh Proctor, tight end Joe Royer, wide receiver G. Scott, defensive back who is a walk-on Alex Taylor, and safety Court Williams. Court Williams, much like Paris Johnson, not a starter but due to other depleted scholarship players being unavailable, could have seen time had he been available. So even though like those two aren't technically lost starters, but still kind of contributing to the lack of depth. But Kyle, you want to know who did play? Does he wear number one? He wears number one. Number one on his jersey, number one in your heart's Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. Number one played, number two played, number five played, <laughs> number 33 played, number yeah. eight Number played. eight. Number eight played. Yes. He had a great game. And we were talking, of course, Trey Sermon. 112 yards in a touchdown in this game. His progression's been really good this season. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle, I think you posted... Uh, yeah. It was in our Discord. Yeah, yeah, I found it. Uh, game one, 48 yards, 4.4 average. Game two, 56 yards, 4.3 average. Okay, so there's your first two games. First two, again, new to the system. Mm -hmm. Weird off season. Mm -hmm. Starts off, not bad. These aren't bad numbers. Over four, over four yards a carry nearly four and a half a carry these aren't bad numbers by any means no uh game three 68 yards 5.7 okay, game four better. yep 60 yards on less carries 6.7 per carry this game 112 yards 11.2 per carry trey sermon starting to figure out this offense yes sir and if you watched any of clemson who I I'm starting to become fairly sure will be Ohio state's opponent in the playoff more on that later. If you watch Clemson against Virginia tech or again, in many of their other games, very vulnerable to the run. Their defensive line is undersized. Very. Yes. We, we've seen a number of times this season with, with Clemson. Yeah. They definitely struggle on obviously both sides. On, on both running and passing as well. We saw Notre Dame being able to pass um, at just really well against Clemson uh, about a month ago. And then here against Virginia Tech, they were able just to run over them too. Yeah. Holding on to the ball, trying to keep Trevor Lawrence off the field as much as they could. And was able to control the ball in the first half. They looked really good. Yeah. So Ohio State uh, ends the first half, first half up 28 to nothing. Mm -hmm. And I would say it was a, overall a pretty dominating performance. Ohio State looked very good on offense. They looked tremendous on defense. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, think, I will. I think, I think Michigan State had like two or three first downs all of the first half. It was something really ridiculous like that. And I know at least one of those was because of a penalty. So, yeah, the defense looked tremendous. Um, I'm not really willing to declare some sort of big victory over the fact that the defense looked really great. 
because if you listen to Kyle and I's Friday episode, uh, you you know that the offensive side of the Michigan State ball has been horrendous this year. So let's let's not get too excited over Ohio State completely dominating defensively in this game. Uh, I would say, and I'm not taking, I'm not trying to take anything away from the defense. I thought they played well. You still have to show up. You still have to play well, but, (laughs) but Rocky Lombardi. Uh, In fact, I think we have a question in here somewhere. Um, Was there a, uh, this is from our, our geographically challenged friend, Ichigan Bucknut. I mean, that's what his username is now. It's now Ichigan. I don't know how else you would pronounce that. Was there a step? Uh, was there steps taken uh, forward by the defensive back group, or is MSU just that bad? MSU's Thanks. just that. Yeah, no, M- MSU's just that bad. I'm not saying that the defensive backs aren't progressing and taking steps forward. I'm just saying the Michigan State game doesn't prove that. That's that's it, all I'm saying. There wasn't much in terms of how much worse they could get, because <laughs> they're, they're based off of the national rankings. Ohio State was the bottom quarter, yeah, of pass defense, and they yep. moved they moved up. They're still maybe bottom third now, <laughs> but but rush defense, yeah, they're they're still one of the top defenses in stopping the run. For sure, the but having but having these kind of games really helps pad the stats, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, definitely Michigan State, and we and we even said it on Friday's episode. I was not worried about Michigan State um, scoring a lot of points. It was more of how how well can Ohio State's offense move the ball with with um, number of players out. And and just stop with the turnovers that we saw against Indiana. For sure. Um, by the way, ironically, and of course this is just a stupid statistical anomaly and not necessarily a reflection of anything. Mm-hmm. Ironically, Ohio State ends up uh, only outpassing Michigan State by 19 yards. Because they, they didn't need the pass. Exactly. They exactly. Not, no, they no, no, no. rushed for 322 yards against Michigan State. And just how how much does that really say about a Michigan State defense who's always been known for having stingy defenses? It's hard yeah. it's hard to get uh good yardage against Michigan State. You're punting the ball a lot. And then Michigan State tries to get field um field position here and you're rushing for over six and a half yards per carry. In defense of the Michigan State run defense, I'm not talking about the pass defense. They got abused. Ironically, again, statistical anomaly with the stats. Ohio State went up big early, so they at a certain point just weren't throwing the ball down the. Well, they actually never really threw the ball really down down the field. But there's just a couple a couple of them. The one with yeah. to Chris Olave. Yeah, but the the point is that Ohio State just basically started focusing on the run game very early in the game Mm -hmm. just because they were up so big. But as far as the run Michigan state's run defense goes, like they were on the field. It felt like the entire game. I don't think I have time. Do I I have a time of possession? I don't think I have a time of possession stat in the notes, but it, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that Ohio state was getting first downs. Michigan state, especially in the first half was not the defense was on the field the entire time. I don't care how good your defense is. If you spend that much time on the field against a talented opponent, eventually like you just run out of juice. I don't care how well conditioned you are. I I don't care. Eventually you run out of juice. You can't have your defense out there that much. Um, It was was 32 47 for Ohio state 27, 13. So it was a lot closer than I thought time of possession oh sorry say it again i 32 47 so just under 33 yeah. minutes for well Ohio State and just over 27 for sparty but what would it have been in the first half yeah that 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 would have been a good right I, we don't yes. have that we don't have that number unfortunately but yeah because michigan state was starting to 
get some first downs and put together some drives in the second half a bit. They do end up getting a touchdown. They do end up getting a field goal. Uh, they are ended up gifted a safety. But, you know, they, they had some success in the second half. So the fact that the actual end of game time of possession ends up being closer isn't a huge shock. But when the game actually mattered, I would imagine Ohio State had a really <laughs> pretty healthy share of that time of possession. Speaking of uh, Michigan State doing better in the second half, Kyle, let's uh let's play my new favorite game. You ready? You ready to play my sure. new favorite game? Sure. Okay. My new favorite game is called Why the Hell Were They Starting? So over here, we have Michigan State. Mm -hmm. uh, they will be taking on defending champion Kirby Smart. Um, hey, Michigan State. <laughs> Why the hell was Rocky Lombardi starting? Peyton Thorne comes into the game. I think he completes his first 10 attempts. Maybe first 11 attempts. Ends up going 16 to 25. But he has a yards. He nearly doubled the yards per attempt of Rocky Lombardi. He had 147 yards compared to Rocky Lombardi's 33. <laughs> Unlike Rocky Lombardi, Peyton Thorne actually gets a 64% completion percentage, whereas Rocky Lombardi, Rocky Lombardi couldn't crack 50. And if you're wondering if this was... Again, maybe the first half versus the second half, Ohio State trying harder versus I've been watching Michigan State all year and I I I I I'm gonna stop myself from really going after a collegiate athlete right here. So <laughs> if I'm starting to hesitate, that's why mm -hmm. I think so just just to say this as nicely as I can, why the hell wasn't Peyton Thorne playing much, much sooner in Michigan State season? Please explain yourself, Sparty. No idea. I do have some first half stats. Okay. 18 minutes, 19 seconds for Ohio State. 11.41 for Sparty. Yeah, that's that's more that's more what I was... First, first half here, Ohio State, 270 total yards. Sparty, 80. Yeah. 12 of those on the ground. <laughs> yeah. And that and that's with uh, Peyton Thorne coming in and going six for six for thirty five yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it it was uh, it was a bloodbath. This is a fifty two to twelve win that was somehow worse than the score indicates. And I think we were all preparing for Ohio State to underperform this game. You know, you're yeah. missing seventeen scholarship players. You're missing. Your head coach. Your head coach. You're missing three. Was it three assistants? What Greg Madison, uh, Corey Dennis, mm -hmm. and someone else. I can't remember who off the top of my head. Uh, Kyle, can you check the breaking news channel of the Discord? I think I put it in there. Uh, it, yeah, you're missing 17 scholarship players. You're missing, it was like five or six starters. You're missing four coaches, including your head coach. And um, yep, you got here Ryan Day, Greg Madison, Matt Barnes, Matt and Barnes. Corey Dennis. Matt Barnes, that was the fourth coach. Yeah, it's uh pretty pretty devastating. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I kinda think that's why Ohio State destroyed Michigan State. I think they actually go into the Michigan State game taking it much 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 more seriously Ooh. than yeah. they would have otherwise they kind of yeah, went into that game as if they had to as if they had to bring their best to beat michigan state and the good news and we're not going to know this until maybe and if the game comes up next saturday we're gonna we're gonna see a number of these players back because not not all of these players who are out was actually would tested positive. It was more of them sitting out because of contact tracing. Yeah. So we and that's not a thing that Ohio State has released. No. Ohio State has not released of those twenty three players who were tested positive and who were out due to contact contract tracing. So that's not information we have at this time. Nope. 
Uh, let's see. What else? What else? Let's see. Justin Fields looked really good. Didn't yep. have to really pass the ball all that much. 17 for 24, 70% completion, 199 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, mentioned Sermon had a career game as a Buckeye. Yeah. Justin Fields rushes for another 100 yards for the game. CJ Stroud gets his first touchdown as a Buckeye. Yeah. Um, he, had, he had a nice read there. Runs off 48 yards, which shows a lot of promise for the 2021 season as far as if have a similar type of um, runner as Justin Fields for next year. Not that he has the job. Jack Miller no. has something to say about that. Yeah. But no, I, I, feel, I feel good about Ohio State's quarterback future. Whether it be mm-hmm. Miller or Stroud, I feel good about it. And by the mm. way, I just want to point out that if if you really, really liked that run by C.J. Stroud, I'd like to point out to you that they didn't even list him as a dual threat quarterback. <laughs> he yeah. per per twenty four seven sports, he is a pro style quarterback, so he's not a runner. Just just if you're a casual fan, he's not a running quarterback, not by trade. Just want to throw that out there. He is a thrower of the football. CJ Stroud is. Yes. Uh, Let's see what else. Uh, Uh, I I think, I think we need to talk about the coaching staff and the offensive line, offensive line. Devastated. Oh yeah. Especially the first, the first drive, which ended up getting a touchdown. Great. That's a, that's a great, uh, it's a great statement saying, Hey, we got three. We had three. Yeah. Three offensive linemen out. One of one of your starters had yeah. a transition to the center. Ki- kind of six, or excuse me, kind of four, because yeah, well, your yes, presumed you the... sixth man was also out. Yes, your, you had one Ohio of your State... starting linemen switching positions to center, yeah. and it was really well known that he is not a center. <laughs> well, he, and, then you, he, and then you had, and then you had, he um, is actually that's that's part of the concern. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. He, he had, is a. Uh, he was recruited as a center and he's supposed to be the center next year. Uh, we, you just have to chalk that up to yeah. a young man with some nerves. That yeah. That's it. That is a and, young and it, man. And it did improve as the game went along. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's a young and, man and you working White, through some nerves. And then you had White Davis, the only starter in his position, in his normal position on that offensive line. And for them giving up, what was it? Three set only three sacks for the game, and yeah. I know this is a bad Michigan State game. And Ohio State's been known to give up sacks, whether it's Fields holding on to the ball longer than he should, or a breakdown in the communication of the offensive line. But only three sacks for this game compared to what we've seen in previous games. That's that's something to really um, that's that's something really positive to take out of this game. You only get three sacks for bunch of players who've only been working together as a unit for a week, maybe so, a little bit more than a week as, as that unit. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, they started to know the players were going to be out, but then they weren't doing a lot of actual practicing the week before because of, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. the facility being contaminated and everything. And so first off, I want to, I want to congratulate Jack Miller. Uh, He had, I mean, Justin Fields, that first drive especially, but also through a lot of the first quarter was basically playing shortstop and quarterback. Mm -hmm. Uh, That was a real rough start, but you, you know what, you know what Jack Miller did? He stuck in there. He worked through it while playing against, and again, Michigan state, not a great football team, but it's still a team with some talent along the defensive line. He worked through it. And he figured it out in the middle of a game on national television with a season on the line. He figured it out. So congrats to him for working through it. Congrats to the, the three, the three, the two, the two guys, the three guys, no, the three guys, the three guys making their first starts as, as Buckeyes. That's huge. They come in again, as Kyle said, come in and, and absolutely kill it. Um, 
the I want to congratulate Greg Strudrawa, who is a coach that uh, has received criticism over the years. Uh, but I'd like to point out that he has received criticism primarily from a recruiting standpoint, as far as being a developer and as far as being a game prep coach is excellent. And he proved it. If you had any, he, he might be the, he's, he, I, he's, I think you can say he's probably the weakest recruiter on the Buckeye staff, but why keep him around? This is why. Yes. He comes in and he was able to put together this offensive line. He had the backups ready in a season that is chaotic. He had his backups ready to come in and play. He put together the unit on short notice and he had them put together a really nice game. So mm -hmm. if you see Strudrawa maybe failing on the recruiting trail and you're asking yourself, why, why keep him around? Well, this is why, because he's capable of doing stuff like this. Yes. Congratulations to Kevin Wilson, who basically runs the offense single-handedly and you know, he's capable of it. He's a big boy. He's, he ran the Oklahoma offense for years. He ran the entire Indiana program as a head coach. He steps in and he basically runs the entire offense. Now, you know, well, it was Ryan Day's offense. No, not exactly. Because he had to adjust that offense. That was not the same playbook that Ohio State had used in the four games previous. He put together a really good game plan that got the ball out of Justin Fields' hands quickly. You had to adjust to starting with two new offensive tackles. Ohio State was missing three of their top four tackles. Their, their number one or two backup also out of this game. They had to plug in. They had to plug in, like I said, they had to plug in three new offensive linemen. They knew the pass protection was going to be lacking. They put together an offensive game plan and executed it on short notice and it worked to perfection. What one thing I was a little surprised with with uh, Kevin Wilson uh taking more control on the offense here. Yeah. Zero completions to tight ends. It's not it's not super surprising. Um I know well, I, I guess I guess too you have the tight ends helping out. Yes. The tight ends were primarily blocking. Again, you have to put together a game plan. The, the offensive line played well. I, I don't want to take anything yeah. away. I want to take absolutely zero away from the offensive lineman who stepped into this game and played well. But the coaching staff put together a game plan to put them in mm -hmm. position to be successful. Yep. They understood that the offensive line was going to be limited and not as good as their starters because the starters are the starters. They understood that going in and they put those young, inexperienced, not quite there yet offensive linemen in position to succeed. Mm -hmm. Also, also congratulations to acting head coach. Yes. Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson now 1-0 as the Ohio State head coach, which means he officially has one less loss. <laughs> And therefore is the winningest by percentage coach passing Ryan day of all time. Yeah. One and, and no, oh, baby. It, it, Best thing about one and oh is a chance to go two and oh, eventually yes. maybe, but hopefully not. Well, I, I think Ryan day's coming. I think Ryan day's back for the game. Whatever it happens <laughs> or, or whomever Ohio state ends up playing on Saturday. Yeah, there's there's that too. But yeah, no, a lot of players, even former players, just coming out and just saying just how great of a guy Larry Johnson is. Yeah. And just how how well he's liked in the locker room there. And just it they didn't miss a beat with Ryan Day sitting at home on his couch watching the game. You suppose he was actually sitting? I I, I no, peg, that's true too. I yeah. peg I peg Ryan Day as a pacer. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we knew, we knew coach Meyer was, he, he was a pacer. <laughs> I mean, everyone's a pacer on the sidelines. No one's sitting there watching the game from the sidelines, but I feel like absolutely both of them. Also, mm -hmm. they don't watch a football game sitting down. I, I wonder, I wonder if, uh, 
owner of Coach Day has a basement room where he has the doors shut and he's just down there yelling well, or he pacing. <laughs> legitimately might be isolating himself from the family, so maybe. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. That, that was, yeah. Okay. All right, let's see. Um, anything else you want to talk about here? Haskell I, I Garrett. I, I don't... Yeah, Haskell Garrett. We, what an we... athletic play by him. And great game overall by him. Yeah, great game overall, of course. Uh, incredibly active, incredibly. But, of course, then he gets the touchdown. And, my goodness, Haskell Garrett. What a story. They, they need to make a movie about Haskell Garrett. Mm-hmm. Disney Plus, cancel whatever that Clemson BS is. Cancel it now. We're doing the Haskell Garrett story. Mm-hmm. I just like that right there. Ohio State interceptions. One by Sean Wade, which was a great interception, by the way. Great focus for him to keep an eye on that ball when it was yeah. just tipped. Still being able to hold that in. But then you see H. Garrett, one interception, one touchdown. Zero yards. Zero yards. Because he's that good. And by the way, let's <laughs> let's make sure we also point out that he made the tip as well. Mm-hmm. He's yep. the one that batted the ball in the air in order to catch it. So even if even if that ball goes out of the back of the end zone, that's still a great play. Yes. All right. All right, anything else here? I know we're a little long here for the um, the review here. Anything else you want to talk about here? Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, maybe just real quick. Um, what uh, Mayan Williams I thought looked really good. I, that was his first action as a Buckeye, was it not? Mm-hmm. So I thought Mayan Williams looked excellent. Oh, in his last in his last time here at um, Spartan Stadium, Chrisman just loves punting on that field yeah he had a i think he had like five punts but two of them two of them were particularly devastating yes one of them sets up haskell garrett for a touchdown as a matter of Mm -hmm. fact yep so you know what let's also give that touchdown (laughs) to drew chrisman let's give him the assist on that yes all right yeah well we'll find out if ohio state plays the team up north or another team well, hopefully we'll get more information on Friday's episode. Maybe. We'll yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Considering we record Friday's episode on a Wednesday night. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? All right. Um, I think it is now to hear from our sponsors, Jared. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm almost, uh, I'm halfway through. I'm a little over halfway through because it's a, it's a thing. But yeah, uh, of my, my cold brew, I'm making some cold brew. Cause I wait for it to get cold outside to make my cold brew for, some stupid reason. <laughs> um, but yeah, of my iron bean coffee, Kyle, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to open the big bag or ride or die next, but I have right here a bag of the fear. No bull. This is not the actual bag. This is one of the sampler bags. Uh, so that's, that's not the actual artwork. And I do want to talk about the artwork. Have you seen the artwork on these things? I've, yeah, they're really nice. They're very really, nice. really nice. Uh, I like to say that they have very eye appeal, very eye appealing. Yeah, um, I find that coffee bags, unlike beer cans, tend to be very samey and boring, which is, I I don't know, I think it says a lot about the company that they don't just put all of their stuff in a brown bag, or they don't put all their stuff in, like, the same bag. I, I think it's, it's just uh, an indicator of the effort that they put in. Again, so go to the website and, like, look at their mugs. Look at the mugs they have for sale. They're all handmade. Again, beautiful. A lot of effort put into them. All limited edition. Those are amazing too. It's just a company that does like all the little stuff right, including not roasting the beans until you order them. Including being fair trade certified. Including getting single sourced beans. It's a company that's based on details and integrity doing things the right way. Why? Because he's a Marine. <laughs> he's a veteran. Uh, Iron Bean Coffee, you're supporting integrity. You're supporting a uh, former, uh, well, a, a veteran, a former Marine. You're supporting an Ohio-based company. You're supporting a fair trade company. It's amazing what they do. Kyle, I think we just got a message from Mad Canadian in the Discord. See if he had anything to say. No? Okay. Yep. All right. Um, so yeah, you're, you're supporting a company that is doing all of the things right. And, you know, there's a lot of companies that you could give money to, uh, try and give your money to the ones that are doing things right. And if you have a coffee snob in your life, 
and you don't necessarily know what to get them, you can get them a gift card and they can pick out their own coffee. If you do get them coffee, though, you can save 20% off for the rest of the year with the promo code 2020. That's promo code 2020 for the rest of 2020 at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian has 14 great seasonings, once available, for you to choose from over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Uh, he is still waiting for his his uh, shipment to come in so he can uh, restock his uh, website here. And um, as soon as we find out from the Mad Canadian, um, we'll, we'll let you know. But it's probably best just to find that out from his social medias. Check out Twitter. Check out Facebook. He'll, he'll give you information to, to the date of, of um, when to expect his uh, shipment in. Uh, be sure to use the promo code when those come in. Use the promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. A Mad Canadian Barbecue Company where he has your butt covered. All right, Kyle, uh, you want to do the Ask Sloopcast next, or do you want to look at the national games next? Uh, some of these, I believe. Do, 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 do. Actually, I don't think any of these talk about any of the national games. So let's go ahead and do the Ask Sloopcast questions here. All right, let's 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 ask Sloopcast. All right, first one we have here, Stuart underscore E4 US Vet. Do we see some of these linemen transfer next year? After having an amazing game today. I don't anticipate that now. The the guys who played were all young. Uh, Gavin Cup came in after Wyatt Davis got hurt. By the way, we, we don't have details on Wyatt Davis. We know that he didn't return to the game. And we know that he did not go to the locker room early. He received treatment on the sidelines. So just... That's what we know in regards to Wyatt Davis. Uh, it, the injury happened late in the game, so I wouldn't put a ton of stock into him not coming back into the game. But I would put some stock into the fact that they didn't take him back to the um, to the locker room early or anything like that. They just sort of treated him on the sidelines. I take that as a good sign. That's what we know about Wyatt Davis right now. Uh, let's see. Uh but yeah, no, uh, so Gavin Cup comes in and Gavin Cup's a senior, but other than Gavin Cup, everyone else who came in was, was pretty young. And if they came in for this game, that means that they're poised to be starting soon. Uh, Harry Miller's going to move over to guard or excuse me, over to center next year. And White Davis is going to the NFL. So there's two guard spots open for next year. Thayer Munford, I imagine, on his way to the NFL. No one has to go to the NFL this year. No one's using a year of eligibility this year. Everyone can come back if they want. If. If they want. (laughs) But uh, I don't expect Thayer Munford or Wyatt Davis to come back. So that opens up a spot. I assume, you know, potentially Paris Johnson to start at left tackle. Or maybe they move... Petite free over to left tackle. Paris Johnson gets right tackle. It doesn't matter. Uh, point is, is that there will be plenty of spots open as I expect Harry Miller, Thayer Munford and Wyatt Davis all to be leaving at the end of the year, despite the fact that they won't be forced to. So I know I, of all the people you saw on the field, except maybe Gavin cup, if Gavin cup wants to go start somewhere next year, since like I said, he didn't use a year of eligibility and he can get another senior season. If he wants, he can transfer if he wants, Mm -hmm. but, um, everyone else I I feel like is young and poised to be a part of the start offensive line next year. Yep. Uh, another question from him. Will Ryan day be fired to make (laughs) way for Larry Johnson to continue his amazing win streak? No. And I'll tell you why coaching is ageist. He's 68 years old. (laughs) No. um, uh, Yeah. I mean, he's one to know. He's now the winningest coach percentage wise of all time at Ohio state passing. Mm -hmm. Of course, Ryan day. Let's, let's keep the um, lineman questions here. Um, Another question. Will big greasy 
be a starting tackle next year? Um, Starting tackle? I don't think so. They might bump him into guard, would be my guess. Uh, how many snaps will Whipler and Miller do this week after a bad performance in the shotgun snap? Uh, so what I can tell you as someone who played center in back in his football days, the, I, I you can hit a shotgun snap or any snap a hundred out of a hundred times in practice, just a hundred out of a hundred when, when you actually get into a game <laughs> and you got this big old nose tackle right in front of you. But, but here's the thing, like in practice, even when there's a nose tackle in front of you, like, it's your friend, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, like I know that guy. I like that guy. The just you get into the game, the lights are on, there's people around you. Um, you, you can't just try it again. It's um, it's just different. Like I said, you can hit it a hundred out of a hundred times in practice. It doesn't you, you just have to sort of sometimes mess it up. It, it, that's that's really just kind of it. Um, Whipler and Miller will be fine. I, I, I'm not, I don't take any of those shotgun snaps. If anyone doesn't know, Whipler's was the one who launched it over Jack Miller's head in the fourth quarter. I I just, I don't worry about any of it long-term. I don't worry about any of it. It'll be fine. All right. Let's see. Next question we have here from gangland and on our discord here. Uh, new member. Just new member of the Discord. Yep. How excited are you for our annual Wolverine abuse? Um, right now, I'm just nervous that it's not going to happen. Like, I haven't mm. quite got too excited yet. Because I'm still mostly, like I said, nervous that it's not going to happen. The yes. That being said, I really, really want it to happen. And I just really, really want it. I, we only have... Is it 11, eight games left before we tie up the all-time, like the years? I mean, I'm, I'm not an old man, but I, I need to see this in my lifetime. It's the last thing Michigan fans have left. Well, we have the better all, all-time record, you guys. I don't care. I don't care, except that I do. I really, really do. Cause like in your lifetime, and unless you're like 111 years old in your lifetime, Ohio state has a better all time record over. We're, we're only seven games to tie. Is it seven games to tie seven games? Is, is that count now? Is it seven? Cause I think it might actually be eight because one of those was vacated or does that number you're looking at not count? It the includes vac- the vacated. It, does include the so it's it's well, actually no no it does not so it does not include I apologize so it's okay fifty eight for the team up north fifty one for the good guys there you go I I can't I can't sit around and just wait another year for that to happen I I need that to happen not nine years from now but eight years from now do you hear me. Mm-hmm. It needs to happen. We just should have just played them every game this year. That's uh, IG. I wonder who said we should do that. Hmm. No wonder. Now that being said, that being said, here's another thing I need. I need this to be hate week. I'm COVID has taken a lot from a lot of people and I, I'm not anywhere on that list. I'm able to work from home. I, I'm does it, uh, has it been a big inconvenience to me? Yes, but I'm not a medical personnel. I haven't lost anyone close to me. Has it affected me? Yes, but I'm not complaining because it's hurt a lot of people a lot worse. That being said, don't take hate week from me. In fact, you're not going to take hate week from me because I don't care if we find out Monday morning that Ohio State's going to play Nebraska or Illinois or whom the hell ever on Saturday. I'm going to spend this week hating Michigan. Just so we're clear. Yes. And we are, we're already You're full swing of that. You're not taking it from me. We're already in full swing of that on our Discord. The letter M is now forbidden 
on our Discord server. Yes. Went through all the channel names, all the category names, and, and X'd them all out. Yes. All right. Uh, from Buckeye Jared. Who's not me. Yes. Is dropping 100 on the team up north next week still on the table? And will that be considered style points? It's always on the table. Yes. I, I want to point out that Ohio State just like walloped Michigan State. Like, not even close. Basically treated them like a Mac school, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a fair assessment? Yep. All right. That was without 17 of 85. Of 85. That was without 17 scholarship players. This same Michigan State team beat Michigan. Ohio State, without 17 scholarship players, turned Michigan State into a Mac school. The yes. same Michigan State that beat Michigan. It was worth saying twice. Mm -hmm. Kind of goes into this next question from Stewart. Do our backups scare the team up north enough to sit out next week if they're able to go? You know what? It's not so much that they're scared of the backups. They're, like scared, they're scared of the players in Indiana. There, there is, there's a certain forum who they believe that there are many, many players on that Indiana team that would easily be able to start on yeah. this year's Michigan team. Yeah. Including two of their quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, two of them. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, another question from him. Officially being the team up North week, which game has been your favorite game in the game mine had mine was the cancellation of the revenge tour um for no other reason than the symbology of it i have to go with trestle's first win right i mean yes it was the it was the metaphorical first domino in this century mm -hmm. of dominance uh, that being said, the, the triple overtime was a lot of fun. Uh, Curtis Samuel in overtime, taking it into the, into the end zone, which was the same game. The, you know, the JT, the quote unquote JT was short game. You know, one of my favorites though, and you don't get to see it played too much under lights though. What about 2006 number one versus number two that game Troy Troy Smith again Gonzalez yeah Pittman it's unfortunate but the truth is and this is an unfortunate truth that game was spoiled by the fact that Ohio State got boat raced in their next appearance it it did yes but for looking at just I know the game in general I, I'm I'm I, I'm saying it's not right I'm, it's not right that that happened, but we don't talk about that as the game of the century because of that. And that's, I don't think that's right. And I don't think that's okay, but it's, that's, that's the perception. That's the popular yeah. perception. Mm -hmm. You know, what's you know, it's underrated or, in the or, Ohio or state e or even, even urban Myers first, first win. Let me. Let me let me actually back up. This is this is an oddball answer. All right. I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm going to lean in. This is how oddball of an answer this is. What about the year before that? The loss. The loss. Because here's what's great about the loss. Yeah, that's right. I'm saying this. Here's what's great about the loss. Michigan finally, finally beats Ohio State with first year Brady Hoke. First year Brady Hoke, they finally, was it first year or was it second year? First year. Okay. First year Brady Hoke, they finally do it. They finally beat Ohio State. What's the headline on Monday? Urban Meyer to Ohio State. They didn't even get to enjoy it. <laughs> They had like They're a day. Finally... They, had, they had one day. No, it, because it was already out. Because you remember, he was supposed to be the color commentator on that game. 
He was, remember, he spent that one year in the booth for ESPN. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to be the color commentator for that game. The rumor was out there, so he basically resigned from that game duty to not do it because he didn't want to be a distraction. They mm -hmm. finally beat us, and they didn't even get to enjoy it. <laughs> And it was a close How, game. It honestly, was a close game too. Yeah. Was it? I, I remember 30, 40 to 34 was the final score. Did, did we, I feel like that's in my mind, like Denard Robinson just slaughtered us. Might've. And that's why they scored 40 points. Well, yeah, the, and, and it doesn't matter. Point yeah. is, is that that's an underrated game in like the Ohio state lore of things. Because that is just that is just crazy. Is that Thinking one of, of two victories this century? No, they, is that they right? had no, they had one um, of three. One in two thousand, yeah, and then in two thousand and three. Uh, te technically, two thousand was. Yeah. I don't want to be technical. Yes, I do. Technically, two thousand was a part of the previous century. The century doesn't start until two thousand one. Okay, all right. Either way, but here, here's a crazy <laughs> here's a crazy thing with with that university, Brady Hoke. <laughs> Got you a victory. Yeah. The next few games here, which lost the, the, the next three games that he loses. So Brady Hoke only there for four years. So when you lose by five, you lose by one. Oh, excuse me. You, you win, you lose by five, you lose by one. And then you lose by 14. Mm -hmm. So he was, it was really close. But then the next, but then the next games, they lose by uh, twenty nine, and then and then um, Harbaugh gets his closest one where he, he loses by three, and then you lose by eleven, then you <laughs> lose by what is that twenty three, and then you lose by almost thirty there, and now Ohio State is favored by thirty. <laughs> Ohio State, as we're recording this is favored by 30. The line opened at 27. So it hasn't gotten better. It has not gotten better since they can a Brady Hoke. No, they probably should have kept Brady. Hoke. <laughs> they want to, they want a meaningful bowl game. Uh, it's also good. It's also mm -hmm. good. All, All right. right. Uh, let's get into the national games here, Jared. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Penn State on a winning streak here. Two for two. <laughs> they beat Rutgers 23 to seven. Cost me a sloop pick. Mm -hmm. Kyler, uh, are we tied in the sloop picks now? We are now. Yes, we are oh. tied. Is it annoying that I ask that as a question, even though I already knew the answer? Doesn't matter. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, Nebraska. Uh, Looked it looked pretty decent against Purdue. They pull off yeah. the victory, thirty-seven to twenty-seven. I, Nebraska's not nearly as bad as the beginning of the season would indicate. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I hope. I, I hope. I, I hope they what? don't. I hope they don't do some sort of knee-jerk stuff with with Scott Frost. I hope no, they, I don't. I, 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 I hope, hope not either. I hope they stick with Scott Frost for a while. I hope they mm -hmm. give him a chance to do something with that program. Yeah. I don't understand the whole mentality with with a certain program with a certain news program and this game here saying this is a this was a great victory over a great team. Texas AM beating Auburn 31 to 20. This is a terrible Auburn team. But yet they're they're, they're making it out as this is a this is a great test and it's a it's a um, it was a great show from Texas A&M here. Uh, I mean, first off, Auburn's not terrible. They're bad. They're, they're, they're not good. They're bad. Yeah. I mean, they're below average by Auburn standards. They're below average by SEC West standards. They're just a team. They're a team that's not a top 25 team, but they're in the top uh, 50 uh, I mean, let's not say that they're bad. That's, that's not, I don't think that's I fair. I would say they're bad. They're just, they're just a team. That's, that's what they are. They're just a team. But that being said, it's not a great victory. 
No, no, not by far. And the, yet you're hearing from certain people saying that, oh, with this kind of victory, it should put Ohio, put them ahead of Ohio State and uh, blah, 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 blah. No. I Yeah. Those, peop- those people aren't on the committee. I don't care what they have to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Team Chaos, kind of? TCU uh, beats Oklahoma State. I've been trying not to water down Team Chaos. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm basically have decided I'm only dropping Team Chaos from here on out if I feel like it affects the playoff picture. And Oklahoma State losing does not affect the, affect the playoff picture. No. Uh, that puts are, is is the Big Twelve is the Big Twelve finished? I nope, believe they got one more game. Ooh, this is ooh next weekend. But I think this Iowa is... State is locked now. No. Nope. Iowa State's not locked in yet. So they only have one loss. Oklahoma has two losses, but they play each other. Oh, they haven't played each other yet. Nope. That's next weekend. Oh, fantastic. Or excuse me, two weekends. They have they have next weekend off. They're playing Oklahoma. Or, or is this or is this the uh oh no, this is the Big 12 championship. Okay. Uh, so it's so so yes, yes, they're locked in. They are locked in. It is Iowa State versus Oklahoma. I thought they had already played each other and that Iowa State won. Um, yes. I think you're right. I think no, they, right. they they did. They all play each right. other. It's one of right. the things the Big 12 actually weird right. year. Weird it, year. No, no, no. I'm, I'm giving you all of the passes. And not only, Kyle, am I giving you a pass on that, but I actually have to give you credit. We did our Big 12 preview because of how, just because of 2020, because 2020. We did our Big 12 preview after... The Big 12 had already played a week after Iowa State had just lost to a Sunbelt team and you and I made fun of you for it. And you were still like, I still like Iowa State to go to the Big 12 championship game. And I was like, Iowa State, who just lost to, I think it was oh, and Louisiana the way, Monroe. The team, the team I'm in the middle to- of complimenting you. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the middle of complimenting you. <sighs> By the way, that loss. And you stuck to your guns. <laughs> Shut up. That loss, Jared. <laughs> Fine. You don't get the compliment. <laughs> that loss is to Louisiana, who is ranked right now. Yeah. But they are. It, do- it doesn't take away that Iowa State got boat raced by them. But <laughs> but also at the time, they were like just a, just a Sunbelt team to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yep. yeah, no, I was just trying to give you some credit. Thank you, Jared. You Appreciate dumbass. it. Thank you. You can go to hell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Notre Dame uh, beat Syracuse 45-21. to it, They didn't look as sharp defensively as what we've seen Notre Dame, but they pull off a victory here. Yeah, yeah no, Syracuse, I thought, looked pretty respectable in this. and I have one win. Yeah, I know, but uh, okay. that's what I'm saying. Okay. Syracuse looked respectable in this. Mm-hmm. No, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not complimenting Notre Dame. I'm not trying to say this was a good win. I'm saying that Syracuse looked, they, they didn't. I think it's clo- the game was closer than 21 to 45 would indicate. I thought that Syracuse looked better against Notre Dame than Notre Dame would have liked them to look. That's yes. all I'm saying. All right, all right. Uh, Indiana. Yeah. Big surprise here. Indiana beats Wisconsin 14 to six. Yeah. To uh, six. Turns out Indiana actually might be pretty good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who would have thought? I mean, without Penix. No touchdowns. When, when does the last time that happened with, oh, I know the last time. When was the last time Wisconsin didn't have a touchdown in their game? <laughs> <laughs> was that the last time? Might be. I, okay. I I don't know if it's true, don't, or not, but don't, I'm going to say it. Just yeah. I'm just going to. I'm just going to say yeah. it. Don't don't let facts get in the way of a good story. Yes. Fourteen to six, Indiana now. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and point this out. Uh, with with that victory, Kyle. Mm-hmm. Seventy one point four. This is one of my favorite stats of the year. Seventy one point four percent. Do you, you know what this number is? 
Mm-mm. Of Big Ten teams, 71.4% of Big Ten teams have this in common. Losing record? Not technically wrong. <laughs> have two wins. 71.4% of Big Ten teams currently have two wins. Maryland, Sparty, the team up north, Penn State, Rutgers, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Illinois, Nebraska, and Purdue. No team has fewer than two losses. No, I have. <laughs> okay. 71.4% of Big Ten teams have exactly two wins. <laughs> Just, just, just so yeah. we're clear. Not more than two wins, not less than two wins. Two wins. Zero percent of Big Ten teams have less than two wins. Yes, Kyle. I like numbers. <laughs> uh, let's see. Florida beats Tennessee 31 to 19. They struggled here a little bit here, but they pull off the victory here. Oh, that was three years in a row. You got, you, you got a triple here score. Listen, listen back. Listen okay. back. All right. All right. I will. I will. You're right. <laughs> I'll get better next time. <laughs> 31 to 19. Yeah. Uh, Florida looks vulnerable. They're, they're not. Kyle Trask is very good. And should they make their way into the playoff somehow? Kyle Trask will look good. They're mm-hmm. not going to win. They're not one of the top four top three teams in the country. They're a top 10 team. Kyle Trask is very good and a good quarterback, a very good quarterback in college football will take you very far. Yes. Yep. I mean, I mean, Florida had this handily and Tennessee scored a couple of touchdowns later in the game though. Yeah. But yeah. It's still, it's still concerning though. I, I, what, I don't know. It, it's, it's fine. Tennessee, mm-hmm. it, Florida's a good uh, team. They have their their defense is not spectacular. No one's is this year. Yeah, that's that's it. Uh, that's really the entirety of it. Coastal Carolina beats BYU twenty two to seventeen. Credit to both of these teams for doing this. Mm-hmm. They they book this game at like within the week. Yeah, it was like Wednesday. It was yeah. like just a like three days before. And they're like. Like, hey, you want to meet in the backyard and play some football? Sure. It's basically what it was. So all of these, oh, it takes 10 plus years to schedule a game. No. Well. No, bro. No. Keep in mind that they didn't try and sell tickets. <laughs> That's kind of, it's part of, yeah. it's part of the thing. But yeah, I don't, yeah. Yeah. But no, the whole idea of trying to schedule games 10 years out is ludicrous. But that's. Those are two different ends of the spectrum. Yep. Uh, Clemson, 45 to 10 over Virginia Tech. Uh, This final score might not show it, but if you actually watch this football game, one of the things I take away from this is a thing I've been saying all year and I've already said it once, maybe even twice in this podcast. Everyone's defense is vulnerable this year, including Clemson's. Mm Mm-hmm. Bama's defense is vulnerable. Ohio State's defense is vulnerable. Clemson's defense is vulnerable. No one has a great defense this year. The offenses are light years ahead of the defenses. It is much harder to play defense. And given all of the practice limitations and just 2020, all of the defenses are lacking this year. All of them. It's not just an Ohio State thing. Ohio State is struggling stopping the pass against good quarterbacks. Welcome to the club. Virginia Tech does not have a good quarterback. They were still throwing the ball across the yard against Clemson. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they were running the ball too. Yes. If slash when Ohio State and Clemson meet in the first round of the college football playoff, which is a thing I believe will happen. Clemson will be number two. Ohio State will be Mm -hmm. number three. This is a thing I believe will happen. Ohio State and Clemson will probably score about 40 points each. And at the end, one of their quarterbacks is going to have a chance to win it. And they'll probably will. So try and have the ball last. (laughs) 
is is my is my takeaway for or my prediction for that game that I think will happen. And by the way, in this game, Lawrence did not look sharp no. at all. No, he did he, not. He did not look good. He was twelve for twenty two. Yeah. Through a buck ninety five and he did it seemed like most of his damage on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It was not a good game for him. Mm-hmm. And I saw a few people asking the question of is Trevor Lawrence really all that like the number one pick based I off think, of what we've seen the yes. past this year and the year before. Yes. Okay. I, if Trevor Lawrence had Ryan day and Kevin Wilson, I believe it's a coaching issue. I don't believe it's a Trevor Lawrence issue. He's mm-hmm. not getting the type of support from a coaching staff standpoint. That, Dabo is basically a cheerleader. I'll say it. He's a good culture builder. He's a good recruiter. He's not like some sort of great X's and O's guy. Yeah, that's right. You tell him that that Ryan Day is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Venables is an amazing defensive coordinator, uh, but it's it's he's not on the offensive side. Uh, the I don't know. I just I don't. I think that. I think that Justin Fields looks much better in college, but I think a lot of that has to do with the coaching staff. Mm -hmm. I, I I do think that Trevor Lawrence just based off of his physical gifts is it there. He and Justin Fields are in the same conversation. Absolutely. Yep. And I, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. All right. All right. Last game here, Alabama just manhandling LSU 55 to 17. How far has Oregon dropped off that we're not even talking about them losing now? <laughs> no one cares about the Pac-12 this year. No. No, we don't. I mean, USC is playing on a Sunday today. USC's, and no one cares. No one cares. They're, they're, they haven't lost a game yet, but no Oklahoma, one cares. Oklahoma, and of course, they're, they're big 12 teams, but Oklahoma that looks terrible against Baylor, barely wins. We don't care anymore. No. Uh, Bama looked great. Is LSU bad? Yeah. Uh, yep. Bama ends up winning this 55 to 17. And by the way, it was way worse than that. That does not indicate what was at it? They all. Scored like 45 or something like that in the first half. Yes. They, and they, did. they just like, all right. Was it 45? Come in. Yeah. 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 It was 45, seven at half. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. By so the they, way, at least, they, at least they went 10 for 10 in the second half. Right. LSU. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, they're basically Michigan State. And uh that's it. That is all. All right. And as usual, we are over. So we're not doing terrible. Let's end it. We're not doing terrible, but we, we are gonna end it. But we're not this isn't bad. This isn't bad. <laughs> we're we're maybe getting better at this. Um <laughs> six seasons in. The <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's the end of today's show. Um, everyone come join our discord server. It's getting better by the week. Um, we've had some really great people join recently, uh, really engaging in the conversation. Um, we started a book club. That, that's a thing that happened. <laughs> I, I didn't see it coming, but it, but it happened. Uh, we started a book club in the discord. Um, yeah. So, uh, we have a radio station in the discord. Now we're doing some cool stuff in the discord. Come hang out. Uh, Buckeye, or excuse me. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I lost all, I lost, oh man, that was just, I had a stroke there for a second. I don't know what happened. Uh, discord.thesloopcast.com. Come on over, come check it out. Um, do we have, it's mostly free channels. There are some premium channels. If you want the premium channels or if you want early access to episodes, or if you want some other really cool perks, uh, you can check out patreon.thesloopcast.com. Uh, the the premium stuff starts at $3. And quite frankly, you know there are higher tiers, but the $3 tier is going to get you everything you want or need. So that's really all you have to worry about. Follow me on Twitter, um, at Sloopcast on Twitter. Follow Kyle on Twitter. He's at SloopcastKyle on Twitter. Uh, and if you're looking for any of these links... The Patreon link, the Discord link, uh, links to the Mad Canadian, to the Iron Bean Coffee Company, to our Twitter pages, our YouTube pages, our Spotify, 
Apple Podcasts, Stitcher pages. If you're looking for any of those pages, just go to the sloopcast.com and it will show it just has links. That's all it is. It's just mm-hmm. a page with links. And so you can check out the sloopcast.com to find links to all of your or all of our stuff. All of your stuff, Kyle. All of your stuff. So yeah, uh, check out the sloopcast.com for all that stuff. And uh, Kyle, I think that's it. That's all the plugging. Oh, by the way, uh, make sure to check out the uh, the Sloopcast store, merch.thesloopcast.com. Uh, because, Kyle, congratulations to us. We are now officially big enough to be on uh, the university's radar. And they are taking shit down on a regular <laughs> basis. So go get our merch while you still can. Get so our shit. Get our merch before the university takes it down. <laughs> I've never, I've never wanted to do the get our, oh, our, our t-shirts only available for a limited time. You have to buy it now or you'll never get it again. Well, the university is forcing us to be like that. So legitimately get it while you still can, because, um, Ohio, we're on Ohio state's radar now. Mm. Oops. Oops. <laughs> That's what I get for going on the morning scoop. That's when it all started. But yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Uh, get our merch while you still can. Uh, anything in Kyle's corner? Speaking of being on the radar, Jimmy Harbs. Yeah, there there's rumors out there that Jimmy Harbs is keeping his eyes, his radar in the NFL for next year. Yeah, I'm giving you a two out of ten on that transition. Okay, I tried. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but there's but also there's also there's also rumors that Michigan is offering him like a three year oh. extension as well. I know. I think it's ridiculous too. The <laughs> I I really think I really think and I think um we mentioned this before as well. Michigan will not let Jimmy Harbs go. Jimmy Harbs will be the one leaving. Yeah, people are acting like all of this is weird or new, uh, but it's not. And people are acting like, well, uh, he's getting a three year extension versus um, him lo- potentially looking at the NFL, like these are conflicting stories. They're not. This is the line we've been getting from Michigan insiders all year, which is Michigan will keep him. The That's it. Michigan will mm-hmm. keep him. It's up to Harbaugh to leave. That's what we've been hearing all year. So yes, the university is going to offer him an extension. That's not a surprise. That's what we've been hearing from Michigan insiders all year. Mm -hmm. Yes, he's going to explore NFL jobs. By the way, he's exploring NFL jobs in the same way that Urban Meyer explored the Texas job. Because (laughs) because that's what you do. If someone knocks on your door, if someone calls you and says, hey, I have a dump truck filled with money. You don't say no. You listen. You explore it. Now, you might be listening with one ear, but, you know, just blah, 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 blah with your other ear. But the point is, is that you listen, because even if Urban Meyer was never actually going to take that Texas job, guess what? Fox gave him a big old raise. (laughs) That's why. Now, is it as much money as Texas was offering? No, but you listen. So Harbaugh is going to listen to those NFL offers. If all the NFL offers suck. He'll stay at Michigan. If the NFL offers are offering him X amount of money, he might go back to Michigan and say, Hey, thanks for that contract extension offer, but you're going to need to add another da 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 onto this contract in order to get me to stay. Otherwise I'm going to go coach whomever Yeah, the jet. I'm going to go coach the jets. Oh, okay. Mich- and then Michigan can then decide if they want to match that offer or not, that's, that's just how these things are done. So yeah, he's exploring the options and yes, Michigan's offering him an extension. These are both true. I'm sure. All right. That's all I got. I was going to mention the whole urban Meyer thing too, but you did it already. Yeah. Let's end the show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you want the real scoop on what is going down in the mind of urban Meyer, uh, I would recommend reading Kirk Barton's post on the Buckeye Scoop message board, mm-hmm. uh, which is a thing you should be a part of. 
giving a giving a little bit of love to the podcast network there. Let's see anything else you said you're done with Kyle's corner. We're good. We're good. So, uh, Kyle, tonight's ending music will be. I thought I had this written down. Do I not have this written down? I thought I wrote this down. Da, 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 da. Tonight's ending music will be by a band called Lincoln, which I'm pretty sure is actually just a single guy, but he's out of Cincinnati and I like him a lot and you should check it out. Once again, that's Lincoln spelled so I'd like the president in case there's, there's any confusion there. So that's L I N C O L N. Uh, you can check out, there'll be links down in the doobly doo. There'll be links. There'll be links everywhere. You can get, you can just go down the show notes, check that out. Uh, both to the bands band camp possibly and to the music, it, uh, to the video itself. So you can go check that out down in the show notes. And with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Lincoln. The dog kind of day, Jared. Yeah, we had a double podcast or a double Apollo appearance on the podcast. He mm -hmm. popped up on my lap twice. We got a double LG bark on the podcast this week. And then you have Leo just passed out on your chair back there. <laughs> he is. He's the well-behaved one. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm I don't talking. I'm talking here and he's oh, There goes an eye. Okay. <laughs> I almost said Lincoln, like the president and not like the park, but technically the park that Lincoln park is named after is actually also spelled yes, like yes. the president. They just yes. didn't spell it that way for the band. Nope. Which I think was just good SEO. Of course, I don't know if we were worried about SEO back in 1997 or about when that band was formed. I know hybrid theory came out in like, I think 99, I think is when hybrid theory came out, but they mm -hmm. were a band a couple years before that. But we, I don't think we had the term SEO yet back then. That's search engine optimization for anyone who's not a complete geek out there. By the way, if you're going to start a podcast, everyone, if there's any like future podcasters out there or current podcasters out there, learn about search engine optimization. <laughs> I, I fully believe that the only reason our podcast is as successful as it is, is because I learned about search engine optimization. There is a reason why, Kyle, that this podcast i think in apple podcast to this day this podcast the technical name of it is the buckeye sloop cast colon an ohio state podcast because if someone goes into apple podcast if they search buckeyes they find it if they search ohio state they find it these things aren't accidents Learn about search engine optimization if you want to if you want to be a, a podcaster and if you want to be found in all of the muddy waters of the millions of podcasts that are out there. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a little tip from me to you. And with that, let's rejoin the audio listeners. You you want to make it appearance number three? Come on up. Come on. There you go. Once again, would like to thank Lincoln for ending today's show. And once again, would like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. Uh, I, What are you doing, Apollo? Quit bumping the microphone. Uh, Iron Bean Coffee is a coffee company based on integrity. And of course it is. It's run by a former Marine, a U.S. veteran. He is roasting coffee to your order. That's right. He is roasting it to your order. These are the freshest possible beans they are not roasted until you place your order i'm gonna say that one more time the beans are not roasted until you place your order you cannot get any more fresh than that if you live in the toledo area you can go pick up your beans in person to get them even that much sooner if you live in the ohio area 
well, the, the, the mail doesn't take that long. You'll be fine. Point is, is that it doesn't sit in a warehouse or on the store shelves for weeks and months on ends. You're getting the freshest possible coffee. Some of the more popular flavors are available in K-Cup. Free shipping over $50. Gift cards are available if you have a coffee snob in your life but you, and you don't personally know how to shop for coffee. Get them a discard, or not a discard, a gift card and, and get them a... Uh, Get them coffee without, you know, actually getting them coffee. And uh, for the rest of the year, for the rest of 2020, you can get 20% off your order using the gift code. I almost said gift card again. Gift code still doesn't make sense. Using the discount code 2020. I'm going to say that again because I butchered it so hard the first time. Use the promo code 2020 to get 20% off your entire order. See, was that so hard, Jared? Jesus. Shipping, again, free shipping over $50. Uh, ironbeancoffee.com. Once again, that is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode of was also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Just hang tight, everybody. Mad Canadian will get all of his spices up and ready for you to purchase the entire hog. Well, hopefully this week here. Um, be sure to check out his social medias, uh, Facebook, Twitter, to find out when he's back in stock and you can go ahead and continue purchasing the whole hog again over at the madcanadianbbq.com. That is the madcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to also use promo code SLIPCAST10 for 10% extra off your entire order. Anything else you want to say about the Mad Canadian? Look like you were about ready to say something there, Jared. No, I, not only was I not about to say something, my mind was blank <laughs> about an hour 20 into the podcast. Like I'm just sort of glazing mm -hmm. over at this point. Cause I talk more during the podcast mm -hmm. than I do all week combined. Mad, Mad Canadian wants to once again, wants to thank you and apologizes at the same time. It's just overwhelming support paired with an alarming un unavailability as well. So hang tight. Your favorite spices will be coming back in stock soon. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. What's up, YouTube? Once again, saying hi. My face, playlist. Listen to all of our season six episodes. Laugh at us for when we predicted things and were wrong. Or congratulate us when we said things and it turns out we were right. You can watch the entire season. I don't know why the hell you'd do that, but if you wanted to, uh, you can click on my face for the playlist. Uh, over on Kyle's face, say hi, Kyle. Over on Kyle's face, you have uh, the subscribe button. Uh, it might say Buckeye Sloopcast. It might say Buckeye Scoop, depending upon where you're watching this. We don't care where you watch this. Watch it on our channel, watch it on their channel. But we do ask that you subscribe to both. So there you go. Give us a, Give us a subscribe, give us a like, do all that stupid YouTube stuff. Peace.